what is it about the current environment that has generated more alpha opportunities than usual? Well, the extreme nature of the pandemic and the impact that it had, and also the uncertainties associated with that and the policy limitations or the capabilities across countries, produced an environment of extreme uh, outcomes, but also extreme differences across countries. And so the best opportunities, the biggest opportunities, but also the biggest risks are when you have uh, money and credit flows that then form prices that are discounting economic scenarios that are just unlikely. And we had a a number of cases where, uh, let's just say, for example, the U.S. is one side of of the ledger where there was almost an unlimited ability to for the government to borrow money, for the Fed to print money. You know, you know, going into the pandemic, the dollar rallied, so there was a lot of room to print and even bring the dollar down. Uh, and so there's a massive production of liquidity in dollars uh, that actually sustained incomes at a high level and spending at a, at a at a reasonable level in the United States. Take another country that was at the opposite extreme, which was Mexico, as an example but there are quite a number, uh, Mexico didn't do hardly anything. They didn't execute, they didn't uh, stimulate, they didn't do the big fiscal expansion, they didn't print money. And, and that really cost them big time from the standpoint of their, their GDP growth, their spending. Their spending collapsed, but when your spending collapses, your imports collapse, because imports is one of the things that you buy with your spending. When the imports collapse, uh, relative to the exports, the exports are going to the United States, which is printing the money. And, um, and so the, the current account and the trade balance goes into a big surplus. Uh, and at the same time, the interest rate structure goes up and the currency goes down and the stock market goes down. And so the markets are then at that point discounting essentially the same money and credit conditions in the future as you've just experienced. And they're discounting the same economic conditions in the future as you just experienced. And yet that's probably over. Right. Because what's going to happen is going to be a less money printing in the United States. There's going to be a normalization in in Mexico. And so you have a classic case where those extreme differences in money flows and economic outcomes get get they, they, they get re- registered in prices where the prices then are essentially discounted a continuation of that. But a continuation of that's very unlikely. You know, Greg, I'm just wondering, is there another analogous period when these types of big imbalances and mispricings existed? Yeah, it reminds me a lot of the kind of post-financial crisis period in the sense that you've got new policy and that at that time it was quantitative easing. Today, it's the MP3 policies. The levers are being pulled in different countries to such different degrees. If you remember post in 2009, 2010, the US and the UK were using QE. Lots of countries weren't. You had huge divergences as a result of the difference in ways people were pulling the policy levers and these lingering effects from the crisis that had shifted balance of payments around in such a large degree. So really those, the two things, big differences in how things are priced and big differences in how the levers are being pulled by policymakers create really the sets of opportunities uh, for us. And that to have that many different views that can be diversified across because those, those, um, that situation is leading to what we at least see as um, um, stretched imbalances. 